Welcome to Board Game Archaeologist, where we play time-worn games from the past. I'm Hunter. And I'm Rob. And today we're looking at Alfred Hitchcock Presents Why. Why? The Alfred Hitchcock Presents game based on the 1955 to 1965 TV show. This game was made by Milton Bradley in 1958 and again released in 1967. I'm not 100% sure what box art this is and what release it is, although all the information in it says 1958. If one of you know if it's the old or the newer release, please let us know. This game is made for two to four players and ages 12 to adult. The concept of the game is that you're a private investigator hired by Alfred Hitchcock to figure out who was murdered, by what, and why. Contents of the game, you start with your two dice, which is always good, and your four characters, and these characters are all based on literary, TV, and film. It also includes 60 cards. 24 make up the six ghosts. Henry VIII, Pocahontas, Cleopatra, Napoleon, Daniel Boone, and Nero. 16 make up the clues for the weapons, the poison, gun, rope, and axe. Six cards for Alfred Hitchcock. Six cards for the motives, like bribery, robbery, lover's quarrel. Seven no-clue cards. And the no clue cards are cards that can save you from giving up an important card. And one, it's a mystery to me card, which you need along with Alfred to win the game. The instructions are printed on cardboard inside of the box, and the contents and information is printed on the inside box cover, so you don't have that separate sheet of instructions that you can lose somewhere down the road, especially with a game that's 50 years old, or older sometimes. Um, you start the game by dealing seven cards to each player. Uh, each player always has seven cards, but we'll get into that. And then the rest of the cards get dealt out into each room. So you deal all the cards into all six rooms, unless, of course, you're doing the special two-player or three-player where you're taking some of them out. These are just on display for the lawn. These were actually should be all um, into the rooms when you start. The object of the game is to find enough evidence to complete one ghost, consisting of four cards, one complete weapon, again four cards, and one motive card to win the game. Or you can win by finding all six Alfred pieces and the It's a Mystery to Me card. There's three ways to gain clue cards. One through the rooms, one through the other private investigators, and through the lawn. To start, you roll to see who goes first. High dice roll goes first and you go clockwise. Everybody starts in the living room where there are no clues to start. And you roll to go and you roll both dice. If you roll a 7, 11, or doubles, I just rolled a 7, you can teleport to any room or stay in the room that you're at. If you don't get a 7, 11, or doubles, you basically go the dice roll. So I got a 6. You always use your doors. You go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that was an exact count, but you don't have to have an exact count to end up in a room. You can overroll to end up into a room. And once you're in a room, you'll take the card off the top of its deck and place it in your hand. If it's working with something, then you'll keep it and discard something else, and you'll want to announce what it is, for example, like this is the axe card, and you'll place it down somewhere outside of the board. Also, you can encounter private investigators in a room, and that will work out something like, do you have a poison card? Uh, I do. And then you would take that card, and if you had more than seven, you would also discard this in a similar fashion. However, if you have four of the same card, for example, like the murder weapon or the ghost, you'll place it down, say, I have four of the poison, for example, and then I won't have to discard again until I get back up to seven cards or more. And you don't have to be... Uh, to do person to person, you either have to be in the same room together, but you can also land on the same space as each other. So there's a couple different ways you can do person to person. The third way to win is the lawn. And the lawn is a, are all the discarded cards that you place during the game as you're trying to keep your seven cards. So doing the lawn, you, every, you have to get back to the living room. And you can do that with a 7, 11, or double, or a number count to get into there. And you would do the same thing as like when you're battling somebody. You'd go, okay, I'm looking for an axe. And I believe, ooh, I think there's one right there. So then I got one. The cool thing about winning when you're going at the lawn is I can keep going until either I lose or I just say I'm done. So I'm going to go, ooh, I'm looking for the axe. And I believe there might be another one right here. 
So I got three. Now, if I call for an axe and I draw one that's not the axe, this is part of Alfred, then I'm stuck with this card. So I got to keep this one in my deck and I can't discard that card. I have to discard a different card. So that could really mess with a good hand that I had by losing something that I really need. And once all of the cards are, are eaten up through the rooms, everyone goes to the living room by default and it becomes the lawn game or the go fish game essentially where you're rather challenging other players to gain their cards or playing the guessing game and trying to stack up your four murder weapons the murderies and your motive to win or the six alfred pieces and the it's a mystery to me card right. so what'd you think well, I really liked it. I think 12 to an adult might be a little high in the age group. I think younger people could certainly learn this game fairly quickly. I really like that it's got three of my favorite games all in the one game. It's got Clue by going room to room, looking for clues, suspect, motive, and weapon. It's got Concentration, guessing your cards on the outside, trying to remember what you got. And then it's got Go Fish, um, playing card to card, deck to deck against players. What do you think? I really liked it, particularly like the visuals. I like a lot of the art for the cards, and particularly the game board. I think it's pretty, like really pretty. Uh, the hodgepodge of materials are fine, but I feel like they're all kind of half-baked, but it's fine when you kind of mix them all together like that. Uh, if you could get your hands on the 57 or 68 version, I'd say give it a spin. <laughs> I agree. Um, if you want to learn more about what we're doing, the games we play, and what we're going to be doing on the show, check us out at toyarchaeology.com, or you can find us on Facebook on a page and a group. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.